Um, I'm going to ask, after we finish just going through this, asking the steering group if they'd like to introduce themselves to you. Um, so you know who's actually been involved in. We're actually a, a, a group of seven. And then um, Simon Linford, who's president of the council, is going to take you through why the council was established. And then very kindly, Hayley from Cornwall is going to talk about some work they've already done with recovery and survival, because sharing of ideas and seeing what is working in one area might help us in different areas. And then Leslie is going to take us through the survival and recovery toolbox. Uh, and that's really what we've very, we've been working so hard to get ready for you. We know it's not the finished article, but we've been trying to put in things that we think are necessary. And then we've got other things that we want to draw from you that might need adding that we can carry on working on or maybe involve you in preparing for the people. And then we're gonna have an open forum afterwards uh, at the end and then we'll decide if we want to have more meetings afterwards. And I do aim to get you finished by 5.30, so you will be able to see the second half of the Calcutta Cup. So um, I know one of you, a few of you will be anxious to watch the highlight today. The Italian French game has been a bit of a disappointment, but there we go. Thanks, Matt. So can we go get rid of the screen now? Okay, is that okay? So. Um, I think now, can I ask the steering group just to introduce themselves? Um, some of you will know us, but maybe you won't. So Matt, would you like to start? <clears throat> yeah, I'm Matt Lawrence. Uh, I'm a ringer at Lilish Hall in Shropshire, a small rural uh, ring of six. I'm also a ringing master of the Shropshire Association. Uh, and I sit on the VN. BNL, uh, the Central Council, and are particularly interested in recruitment and retention. Uh, Leslie, you're next. So, okay. Uh, for those of you who haven't come across me before, I'm Leslie Belcher. I am a um, a ringer in um, Buckinghamshire, and um, I am chairman of Art, and I've been chair of Art for the last two years. Thank you, Leslie. Simon. Hi, Simon Linford, uh, Arena in Birmingham, uh, currently president of the Central Council. Thank you. Now, is David Sparling here? No. Uh, David Cacoldi, perhaps you could. Uh, yes, you, you, you'll have to, you have to put up with the other David then in the interim. <laughs> David Cacoldi, uh, I ring at a place called Stenning, which is near Brighton in Sussex, and I'm deputy president of the Central Council at the moment. Uh, and I'll also have to apologise that I have to leave to go to another meeting uh, before this one finishes uh, to do with some central council business. So uh, uh, I'll catch up with people later. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Is, is Vicky here? Vicky Chapman? Uh, Vicky and David are at the same meeting, so perhaps you'll get to meet them later. Uh, and my name's Annie Hall. Um, I'm uh, Secretary General Secretary and Central Council Member for, for Coventry Guild and I ring in Warwick. And I've been a ringer for 51 years. You think I'd be better by now, but there we go. And I learned to ring during a row. And I only put that on the table because I don't want you to think it's a new thing, ringers falling out. They've always fallen out. And my dad put me on the end of a bell rope so I wouldn't hear what was going on, but I heard everything. <laughs> and when I meet you in person, I'll tell you all about it. So some things never change, but some things do. And I have here, I found it and I thought I'd share it with you. And I, I do that for two reasons. One, because we had a great Coventry Guild meeting a few weeks ago when we all shared memorabilia that we'd collected of bell ringing. And that was terrific because you find out different things. But this was sent on the 2nd of February, 1941. And it's got Leicester Cathedral on the top of it. And it says, so this was during the war years, almost 80 years ago to the day, Silent practice at the cathedral on Sunday evening next, February the 2nd, 1941, at 5.30 prompt, by order of the boss. And I assume the boss was Harold Poole. And I know if somebody's here from Leicester, the boss then became Alan Jakes, but I think that was something to do with their office in the police. So that was sent 80 years ago. They managed to carry on. But isn't it fantastic that we don't have to think, put things through the post or travel anywhere. We can see 40 of us on a screen like this. 
and we're communicating and swapping ideas and talking from all over the country. So I think that's uh, probably a, a good sign for the future. So that's um, enough about the introduction. Um, can I hand over to Simon then, who's going to talk about why the group was established? Yes, um, thank you, Annie. Um, I mean, I, I started getting asked about ringing, what we could do to help bringing recovery in, in the first lockdown when, when we thought that was going to be it. Uh, there was a suggestion that the, that the council should take a, a leading role in, in helping ringing to recover after that. Um, but only by working with the leaders of, of um, affiliated societies and, and members and, and grassroots ringers, as, as Annie said, we actually started talking about a, a ringing returns festival as if there was going to be a weekend when we could all say everything was back to normal and we'd have quarter peels and peels and, and, and maybe a big dinner, dinner in the evening. Um, and then we thought maybe that wasn't quite going to happen. Um, and, and now, of course, we all know it's going to be it's going to be gradual, as in fact it was after after the first lockdown and a little bit after the second one. And I might talk later if, if you want about um, how I see uh, ringing actually uh, returning in terms of the release of restrictions and the discussions we, we have with the Church of England Recovery Group um, and the research we're doing into ventilation of ringing chambers, which could be quite interesting. Um, but as, as time goes on, I think we um, the risk of us losing ringers has got greater. At the first lockdown, when I was saying we were going to lose a significant number of ringers, um, some people couldn't see why. And now I think uh, everyone realises it, it's, uh, it is the case. A uh, critical mass of bands is going to be an issue. You, some places you might only need to lose a couple and, and that will cause um, a whole band to, to stop, um, which is a risk. And, and, and I think we're going to lose, we're going to lose some ringing masters. We're going to lose some, some tag captains. Um, so even though we don't know exactly when we're going to start recovering, um, we need to do all we can to keep ringers, uh, keep ringers going so that we've actually got something to recover with. Um, the longer the lockdown continues, the harder it gets um, and the more we're going to have to do. I heard, a, I heard a new phrase yesterday, which you probably heard, which is pandemic fatigue. Uh, I think, I mean, how many of us are not starting to flag uh, running our weekly ringing room practice, which we, we thought we might have to do for three months? Having our, our, our monthly Zoom coffee mornings, which we, we've now had 10 times. Um, Organising talks and seminars and beginning to wonder who we're going to get to speak next. Um, I, mean, I mean, hands up if you if you've got some people in your band who you don't think you're going to get back. I think that's definitely true. Uh, I mean, motivating, we all find it, that motivating other people um, and staying positive and motivated yourself is, is really hard. Um, but in, in, in terms of this group, in, in, in council work groups, we, we realised that, that art was also talking about the future, um, how to keep the tutors and, and those following the Learning the Ropes programme going. Um, and, and how we were going to address uh, what could be two years without face-to-face -face teaching. So we, we thought that it was, it, was, uh, it was worth us all working together. And, and this, this team you've had introduced, it's, it's probably, I mean, it can't be quite 50-50 because there's seven of us, um, but it, it's about 50-50 it's about um, between those who are members of, of council work groups and uh, art management. Um, but, but who is with who ceased to matter some time ago, which is just a, a group of ringers who are passionate about helping other ringers and, and seeing how many of you are on this on this this call and how many are on Annie's spreadsheet that group's clearly got a lot bigger. Um, timing is difficult when the term ringing recovery was first mentioned there were those who there were lots of people said it was too early um, we didn't actually know when recovery was going to be so so what we could we do so we added the word survival um, because we all know that's that's here and now and and, and survival is is very important and we agonized we agonized over when to recruit recovery champions um did we have enough to say we agonized over when to launch the toolbox um did we have enough to put in it we agonized over when to have this call um whether anyone would come um but we decided it was never it's never too early to talk about uh, survival and recovery because this survival phase is going to be rather longer than we hoped it would be so, so, so here we are. We're all maybe we're all maybe flagging a bit. We all may have had three Zoom meetings already today, and have another two to go to. Um, 
but we're ready to share ideas of, of how to keep it all going. So, so thank you, Annie. And now I'll, I'll let you hand over to, uh, to Hayley. Thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, has anybody got any questions for Simon now? We are going to have this open forum right at the end. And I hope a lot of the issues we can address them. But if there's anything that crops up now. No. OK, thank you, Simon. I, I, there was when we had our steering group meeting yesterday, there was a nice phrase that um, Leslie used. She said, um, this isn't going to be a, a talking group. This is going to be a doing group. So uh, I thought that was quite a cool thing to say. Anyway, Hayley, over to you. Oh, thank you, Annie. Um, I just need to share my screen if possible. Yeah. Marvellous. So you'll have seen that bit before. So I'm just going to say hello to everybody. Um, I'm coming at this from more or less a personal point of view, really. So I can be wrong. I just wanted to share what we've been doing so far and where I've come, come at it from. So that's just my kind of um, perspective, if you like. Uh, so please do feel free to disagree with whatever I say. Um, it's not gospel. Um, so just a little bit about me to start with. Um, I grew up in the Gloucester and Bristol Dalston Association. I learned to ring when I was age nine. My father taught me. Um, I'm now vice, vice master at Truro Cathedral and recently I've become the Guild Secretary of the TDGR. Um, I'm a production brewer by background and trade and um, some of you have heard this before so I'm sorry about repeating bits of this um, but I do really like to make full utilisation of all our assets and everything we do have to our, our disposable. Um, I can't stand to see things go to waste and, and kind of wither away so I really wanted to make use of the TDGR framework and make it relevant. It's been largely irrelevant probably for about 50 years and I'll probably get shot for saying that. <laughs> but um, I just want it, it to be useful really. And the truth is in Cornwall, we've been largely on our knees for the past five or so years, really struggling for ringers. Um, so I thought I would just bring in a few concepts because I know that Annie shared my basic um, presentation to you all. Uh, which is great, but I know it's boring just to do the same thing again. Um, I want to echo some of Simon's points, really, in that we're, we're all, it's a massive task we've got ahead of us, really. And uh, with one deep breath, it won't be enough. <laughs> we're all slightly flagging. It's February. It's never a good time. But um, I find that now we've got, when we have got time on our hands, now is the time to think about things. And all summer long, I find myself wandering the lanes around Cornwall with my son, thinking, what can we do? You know, what can I actually do about this? So, um, you know, the bit in the middle, the purple bit, the circle of, you know, what I can control is, uh, you know, what I can do with my band or the band at the cathedral, uh, who I can say actually, apart from, I think one person has managed to keep on board, weekly emails, Zooms, things like that. Um, and, uh, you know, the other kind of things about influence, um, how can I influence other people? What can I actually do? Um, should I uh, increase my own influence? I don't know. So I did a little bit by becoming Guild Secretary, I suppose. I was so passionate to get something done. Um, yeah, so it can seem like an enormous task, but broken down. Um, this can be helpful as well with a SWOT analysis. So um, it could be all good things to be thinking about. Um, it's always good if you can have a strategy with some friends as well, so that you're not out on a, on a limb, really. I use this sometimes as a go hard or go home thing within a production environment, so it can be a bit harsh, but um, whatever you're doing, you know, at that time, um, you've probably got to have some passion to get stuck in and get it done. If you haven't got that, then it probably will be a bit hard work and you'll struggle to convince others. So it's a bit of a kind of get on board and come along with us on the journey, really. Um, I see this as a bit of a turning point, really, for our generation. Um, you know, about thinking about how we can change things for the better and um, how many changes we've had to make within our own lives within the last year, just to survive and evolve and keep going. Um, change can be really quite scary for a lot of people especially bell ringers we don't like a lot of change traditionally um but i say embrace it bring on the opportunity um you know if it wasn't working before 
you know, how can we make it better? Do we need to keep doing it? Um, definitely think big. I've had people say that, you know, by clustering towers together, it's just managing decline, but I don't know whether, you know, that's true or whether it can be um, used as more of a positive thing and, and just grown on. I think the important thing is to get things established nicely to start with and then grow on it as quickly as you can. Um, yeah, so uh, I have a, you know, in a Truro Cathedral pictured, uh, we used to turn up uh, Sunday afternoons um, for even song ringing and there'd be sometimes three of us. It's a glorious set of 12 bells in that tower. And before lockdown, I was thinking, this is not right. What can we do? And this has just exasperated it really. Um, so we need to get going. So we've had some really, really good time to reflect um, and incorporate the ideas and uh, kind of lessons. Uh, during the first lockdown, there was loads of um, thought and uh, reflection on you know, what we do well as bell ringers, what we don't do quite so well as bell ringers. How can we involve more people? How can we be more positive? How can we be seen you know, to be uh, forward thinking and um, fun? <laughs> um, so all those things that I've written about, you know, there's lots of things that we can be thinking about and just try wherever you possibly can to incorporate them into your plans and make use of everything we've been learning about and looking at ourselves in the last six, eight, ten months. Um, yeah, this is the next slide is quite something actually. I don't think people talk about it often enough, especially within bell rigging. Um, the, the fear factor with um, failure is significant, I think, and people don't really like to put their neck on the lines for doing things especially if they come from a ringer's family, or maybe it makes them feel safer if they come from a ringer family. I don't know, but um, I certainly find it, you know, it's pretty hard going to stick your neck out and you've got to be prepared to take the flack if it goes wrong or if somebody doesn't agree with you. And I'm comfortable with that, uh, but it's because I suppose I have a creative background and it's part of the journey and you've got to keep learning. Um, so yeah, definitely get in a team or form a little team around you, make sure they're really supportive and, uh, you know, be prepared for the knocks because you'll get some. Uh, but the main thing is just go for it and uh, don't be afraid of failure because that will stop you. Even if you've done, you know, just made a tiny little bit of effort, that little effort is worth loads. So keep going. Uh, in Cornwall, we've had to think really carefully because uh, I mean, we've got probably got about 25 people that are actually dedicated and would be keen to teach. Um, and we'll be back raring to go when we get back. Um, you know, the, the whole principle about only offering time limited assistance with certain bands or certain projects so that you don't wear yourselves out. We're ever so thin on the ground down here. So we really, really need to be aware of that time limited thing. We're wondering about whether the existing teachers can train new teachers so that we can kind of double our forces quite quickly, really, whenever we can get back to it before actually going on and teaching other people. Um, so we've been thinking about how to do that. Um, we don't want to waste time and effort, you know, trying to engage. Some people will never really change. <laughs> and uh, I've got, you know, I've, I've encountered a few people that, it's going to be very difficult to get them to change or get them to see that we need to change to be able to survive. Uh, so anyway, stay strong. I always uh, make sure I've got loads of uh, YouTube ringing videos and lots of happy memories and I always share them as best I can um, because, you know, whatever it takes to get things done, make sure you've got it on tap and plenty of it. So just going on then to what we did uh, within Cornwall then. About three weeks ago, I presented this to the TDGR one Sunday night. Um, you've seen that one already. So I uh, just went through just a quick summary really of our uh, whiz through this, of what we've seen nationally happen. And I, you know, try and get everything advertised on the Bellboard virtual hubs. I told them about recovery champions, said if anyone wants to be one, let me know. <laughs> um, I did say, and I, I kind of did this a long it's what seems like a long time ago, but it's only three weeks ago, uh, that the actual, I think we've actually only got six um, art accredited teachers down in Cornwall. Uh, we've got a very, you know, I said earlier, we've got really, really 
um, thin on the ground really and arch really hasn't percolated that far down into the into the roots of Cornwall so I knew we'd have a bit of a tough sell on our hands but I can and I think that people actually don't really know what the central council does <laughs> down here um, you know so I think we we'd, I recognize we'd have a bit of a, a hard sell on our hands with anything labelled or branded with uh, art or central council. So I wanted to start this early, really. And I did have a link in here, which you know, Leslie right, rightly told me to remove because I had it a bit too soon, but it's because I was contributing a little bit to the toolbox. So I, I managed to get people a quick look into the toolbox um, online. And um, they, the whites in their eyes actually started to appear and they looked absolutely fascinated. And um, they were really, I think, reassured that people had been thinking about it and there was help at hand and it wasn't far away. So I think with this rollout of the toolbox, uh, you know, last night and over today, I've put it on my local Facebook bell ringing group and say, look, here it is, make use of it, have a good read. And I think people are responding very well to that. So it's a great help. Uh, just this is what we've done so far in the TDGR, bit of virtual events, bit of a uh, ringing room. We did a, a virtual dinner, which is a laugh. Uh, we try and keep the older, the Guild publications going as well. And uh, we've got a Guild email list. All good. And we keep all the, the COVID updates as well uh, from, from the Central Council straight going around the Guild as well. So people know what they can and can't do. Um, yeah, so the next move. Uh, basically, the, the big thing on this is we just wanted to be able to hit the ground running when it's time to do it. Um, so we want to be ready, really. Uh, Miranda is putting a survey out in um, our Guild publication soon so that people can, they've interacted with us online, but uh, they can also do it paper format as well and send it through if they want. Um, just information gathering uh, about what type of help they'd like, where they are, if they need anything. Um, you know, now or even when they return, you know, if they've got any specific concerns, um, you know, what can be difficult and um, what can we do to help them really by making the TDGR relevant, you know, what can we do for them? So I had a specific um, guy on the, on, down on the lizard called Robert Woods, Bob Woods, he's an absolute laugh of a fella. Actually not really met him before this, actually with quite a lot of the bell ringing contacts, I hadn't really met them before this. Um, he was uh, saying on Facebook, uh, Simon will have seen this before actually, when we had Simon speak to us back in summer, um, he was really, really concerned that, you know, as I said, that Cornwall was really on its knees, especially in the rural districts, uh, about having a lack of ringers, and what to do about it, and uh, the, the age profile getting more and more old, um, so uh, we decided, um, it was me and uh, Bob and a lady called Miranda Penhalligan, who is our Western District Secretary, brilliant, uh, little team of people, so three of us basically, thought, right, what can we do? Um, so I got, there's a little map there of our deaneries uh, across our diocese in the corner down here. Uh, there's the object of our guild up here. And so we just, just decided that the whole Western branch really, uh, which would go from just south of Truro down to the Land's End, would be too big really for one or us or even a group of people to try and coordinate stuff all over that area. So we just thought, right, well, if we split it up into deaneries, which is just the carrier deanery for the lizard, then we, that's a much more manageable size. We can get somebody, a deanery steward, to be kind of coordinator for any training, any uh, needs, any, any immediate needs of the diocese, just to make contact with the church and uh, explain where we are, where, what the situation is, is ringing at the minute. Um, so that's what we did and started off with a bit of a structure in that way. Uh, yeah, so Bob quickly realized that he'd lose at least four ringers and probably would lose older ringers. And quickly, when he was making phone calls round, he discovered that they wouldn't really come back and they didn't really want to. They felt very scared, you know, in that gap between when we were tier one, luckily in, um, in autumn, they didn't really want to come back. So he, then he did start to panic a bit more then, <laughs> which just focused us a bit more really. Uh, but that's a map of, of the lizard area as shown by Dove. So we really are just focusing in on a, 
it's still quite a big geographical area, but it's just a little bit more manageable. Um, Helston is where Bob rings, and um, there's a six bell tower just above it in green, that's Wendron. Um, so that's a bit more easy, apparently, to, to ring up. So, but the whole of the lizard area, that 10 uh, St. Cavern down there, um, and Landy Wednet right down at the bottom, and that's six. Ever so rural, very spread out. So what do we do? So apparently I said, <laughs> and this is something from my book work background, really, if you can measure it, then you can improve it. Um, so that's our little aim at the bottom. That's why I wrote very, very early on, really, just to assist Bob in gathering key people, really, um, just to have a conversation with the diocese or the deanery at a more local level. And then uh, if we could produce an example that would work or we could see would work down on the lizard, then we could roll it out over the rest of the TDGR. So uh, we gathered some data. Actually, Miranda and Bob did most of it. Um, Miranda was lovely on, a, on an Excel spreadsheet. Bob did loads of phoning around, making notes and things. So he phoned all the tower contacts and Miranda made a big Excel spreadsheet, really. She's, uh, she's very good at gathering all the data and then putting it into a good format. And then additionally, we thought of um, other things that we wanted to ask of an area, like, did you have any learners? Have you got any teachers? Is there an ideal tower that you could focus on when you get back up and running? Um, does anyone use Ringy Room for a practice at the moment? That kind of thing. So this is a, a little snapshot of the actual uh, situation, how we how Bob found it really down on the lizard. You can see we've got the uh, thirty percent, roughly fall, and it'll probably it might even be a bit worse than that by the time we get back. But it's very kind of bare bones, I suppose. But they found actually they lost a whole band <laughs> here at Curie. They had. Um, I think they had nine subs um, in 2019. Um, and now they've got none, so they're gonna have to investigate where they've gone as well. But uh, yeah, there you go. Curie paid for seven in 2019. So it's all a bit interesting. Uh, we did, inc I encouraged Bob to have, you know, contact with the church really. He's, he's in Helston, so he had immediate contact with the kind of rural dean of the area. So that's really good, there's, sorry, Canon. Um, yeah, and I tried to encourage Bob to, in his conversations with his tower captains in his area, that you know if they can maintain contact with their churches and have this kind of um, conversation uh, early on, as early on the better, really. And offer if if there's anything we can do for them, offer it. If there's anything, you know, recordings, or you know, if they wanted to just showcase the ringers maybe or a ringing room just for a bit of a laugh and do a bit of a church zoom with it I don't know anything if they asked anything I just said yeah go for it um, you can only try can't you uh, so we had some findings which they summarized so Miranda did this actually uh, ringers so yeah they were reluctant to share the ringers around other towers they didn't really do very much district or guild um, participation uh, partly because there probably wasn't very much going on, but yeah, not very much confidence at ringing in nearby towers. Uh, didn't want to kind of venture into it when they got back. Uh, they did have an event back in 2019, which it was just ringers really, and there, was, there were no public members turning up. So we're obviously not very, very good at attracting um, actual, you know, members of the public. So there's a bit of work to do there, which is slightly separate to this. So got a bit of a, a bit of a plan about how to get back and what to do once we are back. So Bob's going to maintain tower, you know, contact with all the towers at least once a month. Um, and because most of them don't have computers, some of them are over 80. Um, yeah, emails, telephones, um, teachers and helpers have already been, yeah, during the session I held three weeks ago with the Guild, they were saying, oh yeah, I'll help you, Bob, when we can get back to it. Then, you know, no worries, I'll come and help you. Um, of course, we're, we're going to be thin on the ground, so there's going to be a, a bit of interest in <laughs> see how that goes. But um, yeah, they, he's wanting to um, hold a learning hub at Wendron as well, uh, which is good. Uh, we've got a mini ring in Braddock. I've tried to involve as many local success stories with um, retention, recruitment and retention in Cornwall. So we've got um, St. Petrox in Bodmin talking tomorrow night. Um, and we've got, we've had uh, St. Mary Braddock um, and they've got a little mini ring which was partly funded by the guild so 
we said, oh, if we could borrow that when we're ready, that'd be really good. Uh, just for Wendron down there, that'd be great. Um, so monthly, he wants to hold a Saturday mornings for more experienced ringers once a month to go around and hold some you know, social events and things like that. Plenty of tea, cake, coffee, stuff like that. So the wider kind of TDGR action points, um, I did summarize the session last Sunday asking, you know, if anybody wants to become a survival and recovery champion, turn up to this, you know, that kind of thing. So uh, I didn't have any, anything coming back to me, but we kind of just decided that me and Sam, the president, Sam Lankervis would be uh, the recovery champions for Cornwall. And then we could just part, we'll just make sure everything gets passed through um, like good conduits, really. Um, any particular areas that will struggle, any current plans, um, anyone need help getting up in the, in the towers amongst their bells to check it all over. So, uh, yeah, those are the kind of action points we've got quite a lot. Um, so I hope to be able to create some teams like for teaching as well. Um, I'd like to be able to do it, but I'm still not trained. So <laughs> it's a bit funny, isn't it? I'm in a funny situation with that myself. Um, yeah, contact with the church. So hopefully we, you know, when we can uh, arrange it, we're a bit more confident about when we can get back and get some dates and things, we can, we can actually ask the bishop, you know, what, what are your priorities for ringing? How often, where, what are you struggling with the most? We, we just want to be able to help really and have a, as many excuses to ring bells as we possibly can. Uh, we've got the G7 come in as well. We had some offers of talks from um, Owen and Carolyn. They were really, really enthused about offering to go and talk to various groups of people like young farmers and uh, various different uh, social groups within the community. So I think we're going to get a kind of group of people who are willing to go out and talk to people in the wider community to try and get some recruitment done that way. Uh, yeah, I need to do a separate session, a whole other session, because... Our, one of our districts, the Northern District, just did not, they just not corresponded with anything over the last stop there. So I might have lost a whole district, <laughs> which is a big, it's a big area. So <laughs> hopefully be able to kind of gain them back slowly, but goodness knows what's going to happen. So yeah, thanks very much for listening. And if anyone has got any questions, please do. Ellie, that was excellent. Thank you very much. Not, not easy to talk the year before 40 of us. I think that you've probably never met before. So that's very informative. Thank you. Right. Now, <clears throat> does anybody have any questions that they'd like to put to Hayley? You can um, raise your hand uh, and Matt will probably be able to spot you. I can only see 25. Ah, I think Donna's, yeah, we've got a few. Can we ask Don Jones? You've got a question first, Don. Well, just a, just a request, really. Um, it was very interesting, Hayley's talk and slides. Um, and obviously, she's done a lot of work down in, in Truro. Um, could we have a copy of, the, of, of her presentation? Because that would be excellent. To take. I mean, a lot of the things uh, I'm sure will duplicate what we are doing, but there's some ideas on there that we can. It's nice to see that we're not the only ones with the problems. Yeah, I can't see any. Uh, I can't see a reason why I wouldn't be able to share them. So yes. <laughs> Thanks very much. Um, Tony, I think you had your hand up. Yeah, I first of all, can I say thank you very much? I think it was a really, really terrific presentation. Um, I I want to be. I, I came into this meeting wanting to be as positive as possible. Um, I have tremendous negative thoughts about what goes on around here and, th and there are some parallels but my suspicion is that those parallels stretch from the very far from from Inverness right the way down to, to as we've heard Truro <coughs> and beyond um, but one of my notes was can we be assured that the central council will get this message back I mean uh, our, ch our branch chairman is a member of the Central Council, and I don't think we get any help. What well, if he heard me? He'd be so upset. But you never ask for it. But quite honestly, if you do ask for it, you won't get it. I was poo-pooed when I suggested our branch had a training officer. Um, oh, you're an art member. That's your problem. <laughs> And your problem is, sudden, is going to become our problem. A very, very negative. Um, I, I actually think that COVID 
and this is positive thinking, I think that COVID is going to offer us opportunities. Mm. And it's not, I mean, people are going to leave, but don't let's think they're going to leave. Let's be positive about it. Oh, the other thing I wanted to say, and there were a lot of questions I could take up quite, quite, quite some time. Nobody's mentioned and schools, and the schools are out there. They're not out there for us, but we should use them. I remember attending a lecture by Alan Reagan from Worcester, and he was talking about using schools as recruits. And there's no doubt it works because I had at least 12 from our little village school. Uh, they haven't all stayed, but those that we had, I know will go into adult life with positive experiences about bell ringing. So when their children turn around and say, I want to go ringing, they'll at least say, yeah, I had a good time. I could ring. And maybe they'll go back to it as adults. But yeah. schools offer us, offer the exercise, a, a tremendous uh, wealth of, of um, abilities. Yes. Um, very good point. Thank you very much, Tony. I have to say that um, I've got some experience of working with a school as well, you know, because they are so keen. But I wondered if Simon would just like to respond on the point that you made first. Yeah, I'll, I'll definitely. Uh, thank you, Tony. I'll, I'll definitely come back on that on that last point about schools. That's one of the things on which we're doing the most work. Um, just before this, just before this meeting, I set up the the, a, a meeting for the team that's we, 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 we've just discovered we've got so people in all sorts of places working on school strategies so we're pulling that together next Saturday and we've got a call at lunchtime for all for all the different people who are doing things different things with with school strategies we've got a team a team of young ringers who are working on a national youth ringing association um, we've got a team who are working on on developing curriculum uh, cross curriculum um, stuff to take into schools we've got a uh, team working on handbells going to school so there are there are lots of things going on with school and you are you are absolutely right that um that that's where uh, a source of recruits has got to come from but yes rest assured uh, we're on the case definitely good thank you tony a any other questions now no no great can i, can I just ask cool. actually, can yes. I just ask one hey hayley did you have you essentially put a a sort of branch structure back in in place where there wasn't one before um yeah, I've or, or, or my sub, sub branches yeah. sub branches yeah um so yeah it's just it just mirrors the deanery structure that's in our diocese i don't know if it happens everywhere in every diocese but um certainly breaks it down into smaller chunks because um the districts are absolutely massive and there's just no prospect of getting anything going within them because they're just too big really so yeah, uh, people have requested that the same exercise that we've done on the lizard happens across the whole of Cornwall and it's uh, divided up in that way. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, no more questions. Hayley, thank you very much again. I think we've Pleasure. all learned a lot from you. Uh, uh, Annie, Sean, sorry. Don, Annie. sorry, we've got... Don, you put your hand up again. Your mute oh. is. I'm muted. No. no, Don is. Don, Don, you're Don, it, it must, I, I, I presumed you would put it down. I, I, in, I, I haven't put it down. It's up from before. <laughs> OK, right. Thanks very much. Uh, Annie, just sorry, this is a Roman Sadowski from Herefordshire. Uh, there are a couple of questions posted on the chat to Hayley. I posted one. I think somebody else has also. OK. Uh, I think, ah, oh, Roman, I, you can see that you've uh, done it as a direct message. So I think only I can yeah. see that. You said, how many towers have been ringing any bells over the last few months? Um, we were allowed, because we were in tier one up until Chris Boxing Day. Um, so we were actually allowed to ring in a limited way. Um, yeah, so uh, towers were ringing, um, maybe just a few bells, you know, uh, socially distanced with masks and things like that. So, yes. Uh, and a few had been ringing down on the lizard. That was part of the questions that, uh, that Bob was asking around with the tower contacts down there. Um, I think they were just mostly just tolling though for services, not actually ringing full circle anymore, uh, just because they didn't have very many people that wanted to risk going into a church or a tower because of the age profile mostly. Does that answer your question? Uh, yes, thanks, uh, because uh, it depends. My question was really to do with encouragement. 
Um, with, in Ross, uh, we have a ringing vicar, which is a good thing. Um, and he actively encourages us to ring as often as possible. So that means for the past year, uh, apart from the first two months of lockdown, when we weren't allowed to go out the door, um, we rung every Sunday, uh, even if it's only one bell. And I've used that as a mechanism to encourage other ringers to come and take part. Uh, when we were back in tier one, uh, as you were, uh, then we managed to get six people in the tower because we have a widely spaced uh, tower and rang as many bells as we could. Uh, when we were restricted before that, then we rang as many bells as possible every time we could. And, and the response and feedback, uh, first from the congregation has been very good. But secondly, uh, it's built a team, it's maintained our team relationship in the tower. So in our ringing room, people uh, actively want to come and, and join us and join in ringing room because they're part of the team that rings on a Sunday still. So that's Brilliant. part of our encouragement. That's my, that was the reason for my comment. That's, that's really good. That, thank you very much for sharing that. I think that is one of the things that we've got to focus on more is encouraging people to, to come yeah. back. So terrific, thank you. Okay, so um, I think now I'm going to um, ask Leslie who is going to talk through with us um, the toolbox, please. You all hopefully had a chance to have a look at it last night. Um, but Leslie's going to talk through. We've already had one suggestion, Leslie, that we really should put some slides together that guilds can use mm -hmm. about how okay. to uh, to use the uh, about the toolbox, which okay. I thought was an excellent idea. So just share that with you now. Thanks, okay. Robert. <laughs> okay. So can people see my screen? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. OK, so um, as I said earlier, I'm Leslie, Leslie Belcher, and I'm the chair, chair of art. And what I'm going to be talking to, um, to you today is about the um, survival and recovery toolbox, which we um, launched in Cornwall three weeks ago and everywhere else. <laughs> Um, yesterday, yesterday <laughs> evening, and it's probably going to be rolled out through the various um, rigging communication channels um, over the ne next week. Um, the first thing I'd like to say is this is a partnership toolbox. It's been developed by um, people um, both in art and the Central Council. I would go back to Simon's um, uh, introduction where he said there were seven of us in the steering group and we split roughly 50 50 I would uh, looking at the list of people almost everyone in that steering group is double hatted so for example although I'm chair of art I'm also on the volunteer and leadership work group and uh, I think uh, you know that shows in how we developed this survival and recovery toolbox um the toolbox itself is probably based on six months worth of conversations um, that a whole loads of us have had, not just in the steering group, with ringers around the country and which have been developed by the steering group into, into themes. And the only thing that I would say is that every time we've had this conversation, it's, all, it's, it's actually produced more and more elements within that, within the, within that actual um, toolbox itself. Um, the material is obviously presented as um, a website. Um, it's a series of web pages, and the web pages take various forms. Some of them are quite informational. Um, some of them are in the um, in the form of case studies. So taking um, information uh, and top tips and uh, ideas, and then saying how different people around the country have actually sort of um, implemented those ideas. And then there's various opinion pieces on here as well. Um, and I hopefully, uh, and the opinion pieces are always flagged with some very nice photos of people. Um, so just going on a little bit into the principles of the bill behind this, the, um, the toolbox is split into three major parts. The first part is around survival. And I think that's principally about keeping people going, keeping bands going so that um, they keep in touch with each other. They, they feel that they're part of a band. They, they, they can continue with their love and in some cases development of ringing and also that they feel part of the uh, wider ringing community. And 
you know, one of the major reasons that we're doing that is to retain them so that when we can actually start ringing again, people just sort of automatically feel that they're part of this community, they love ringing and they want to come out and our, and our losses are minimised. Um, the second part of the toolbox is around um, like a transition phase. It's like that transition from, you know, that what we're doing now to I need to be able to be fit to be able to ring in a towel when ringing resumes. And that, um, and that level of fitness can be in all sorts of different ways. It could be materials. So it's about, you know, it's about bell maintenance. It's about doing your risk assessment. It's about getting your, bed, your bells fit. Um, then it's about people. And it's about the physical side. Can I, am I physically fit for ringing, having had a year, 18 months off from, from doing this? Um, if you're 18 or 20, that's probably less of an issue. But knowing the demographic of ringing and um, knowing my own age and physical um, state as well, that's actually sort of not a, not a given necessarily. And also it's the emotional side people lose confidence and how do we give confidence to, um, to people when they're coming back into the tower and then I suppose the final bit about um, getting fit for ringing is that inevitably there will be people doing roles that they weren't doing before all this started whether it's tower captains ringing masters steeple keepers and again there's a piece about um, getting those people up to speed as quickly as possible to be able to take on those roles and be a success in those roles as well the final um, part of the toolbox is around recovery about planning for recovery so obviously that will be um, something that um, recovery champions guilds and associations branches and districts will be looking at but it's also um, making the recovery a success so trying to think about what particular problems that you might encounter because of this long layout for, uh, uh, from ringing and how you can actually overcome those so and I suppose another strand of this is we've got to talk to different people, this toolbox. So we're looking, we've tried to look at it from a ringer. What, what would a ringer need in this toolbox in order to give them the best chance of success of A, wanting to come back as a ringer and, and ringing in their local town and B, you know, sort of um, um, what, what, um, what help you know, can, can they get from other people? We also look at it from a tower captain's perspective. Okay, what, what do they need or what could they need in order to um, manage this and what issues might they actually be looking at um, um, in, the, in their particular towers and how might they overcome them? And then the final one is around branches and guilds, ringing societies, and I think recovery champions as well, because a lot of the recovery champions that we have at the moment are, you know, guild and um, branch representatives. So um, what we launched yesterday is not the complete, it's not the end product, it's just the start, but it's good enough for us to feel that we can launch it and it will be helpful to people. Um, it will grow and it will evolve, both as we learn about how this pandemic is going to end, because there's still quite a bit of uncertainty about that, but also as we're talking to more and more people, we will begin to find which issues are faced by ringers and what help they actually need to overcome those. So having talked about the principles I'm now just going to go through some pages just to sort of explain what our thinking is so that you can um, so almost whet your appetite I think to actually um, have a good look in, in the toolbox and then hopefully share it with others if you like what you see. So I'm, I'm actually going to start with a web page that I reckon if you'd asked me six months ago it would have had no place in my thinking in terms of what one of the issues was going back to ringing. And that is about what we call getting fit for ringing. So if I... Hmm. 
I've just changed page. Can you actually see that new page? Oh, yes. OK, <laughs> I don't know how to make it large, though. Ah, there we are. OK, so <coughs> getting fit for rigging. I was really interested in um, chatting to Mark Lawrence, um, Matt Lawrence, where he was saying that they had he had his association ringers together and the two big issues that came up in terms of, you know, what are we worried about, about the return to ringing were physical conditioning. OK, what's happened to my body, <laughs> you know, in lockdown and will I be able to ring a bell um, when I come back? And uh, if you look at the calculations, I mean, uh, if you think about it, if you think of a keen ringer in the days when we could ring, who probably went to, who might have gone to three practices a week. And if you say they did, you know, because they were, they were, they're helpful, they might have rung five lots of 120 changes during that practice. You're looking at every week doing 2000 plus shoulder stretches, you know? like this which I don't think unless we're doing an awful lot of DIY and painting at the moment is happening at all so what we did was we talked to two ringers who were professional physios and we asked them to develop a set of exercises that people could do at home and because they were ringers who were physio physios they knew what what quote ringing muscles were and uh, it was very nice that they came up with almost the same exercises. That was one good thing. I think the second thing is that um, I got a really nice piece of feedback um, when I was asking people to look at this book last week before we actually put it out where someone said, oh, you know, I, I, I'm a ringer. I've had a really, really bad shoulder since stopping ringing. We don't know whether there's a cause and effect there. And um, that the shoulder exercises are exactly ones that my physio um, for my shoulder has has given me. So this, so I think what we're talking about is some quite, you know, well researched exercises here and exercises that you can fully in, fit into your life. So Annie, who's been um, master of ceremonies today, was telling us that uh, she really liked one of them, really, you know, really tickled her. And every time she goes in her cottage and she goes through a door, she puts her hands up on the, on, on the top of the door. She takes a step forward and she stretches her shoulders. I mean, that's the type of thing that we're talking about here. Um, and we're looking at ways to develop this as well. So on Wednesday, we piloted an online class for ringers in a particular guild. Just 20 minutes run by a ringer who, um, you know, he's also a physio, not, not one of the two here. They had a tremendous amount of fun and they all came away saying, yes, that stretched, you know, the muscles um, that I use when, when they're ringing. So this is a nice piece of self-help. You know, people who are worried and that's the number one worry at least in one association about whether their ringing muscles are going to be there this is something that they can be doing okay now the now the other the converse of this is that we have other resource places on here which are targeted at tower captains so we're looking at what can you do as a tower captain i'm not we're not suggesting you run an ex, uh, an online exercise class but what can you do to help people get into the tower you know with with their um, physical worries but also with their confidence worries as well so that's um and we're hoping that um, I mean, there's one thing that um really surprised me actually which again emphasizes that this is something that really does worry people. Um, in the in my local guild, the ODG, I was, you know, very surprised um, in the summer to hear one of the other people on the committee saying that in his local branch, he when Sunday service ringing was allowed, he put out an offer saying, you can, "Why don't you come to my simulator, and book a little, you know, a little bit of time." And just have a go before you go into your own tower and you ring in front of everyone else and uh, just make sure you can do it. And I'll be there if you need me. And 25% of the branch took advantage of that offer. 
So again, just small little things which really um, uh, aid the transition from not ringing for an awful long time, particularly for us older, more mature ringers, than just going straight in. So that's just one of the offerings. And well, like I say, I wasn't expecting it to be there, but I think it's actually quite an important one targeted at ringers. But now I'm going to show you something which is more to do with guilds or branches, or I think you as ringing champions as well, because you're looking not individual ringers and towers, you're going to be looking at, you know, a group of, of towers. So I'm just going to change over again. Ah, oh, here we are. So, so one of the things that we've done here is to start thinking about um, what guilds, branches, ringing champions can actually do, um, problems um, that they, they might be looking at um, in the recovery phase. And we, we're thinking that um, they, they, they probably split into two and it seems to be very much in line with what Haley was talking about as well. There are going to be things, events, training, maybe even recruitment projects, which span a number of towers. And it's much better that the, you know, if, if the need is identified from the individual towers, that the the ringing society, the guild or whatever, actually take um, re um, responsibility for actually organising those for the towers in their particular area. And then I think the second theme that again came out from Haley's talk was um, identifying specific bands or even groups of bands which are, re which are going to struggle, okay, for various reasons once um, uh, they come out of uh, lockdown and the pandemic and um, you can focus your help on them rather than trying to guess where things need to be done and um, you and uh, and then be a bit hit and miss so it's about focusing on individual towers and groups of towers and what we've done here and we've got a very similar thing for tower captains um, in terms um, in terms of a page which talks about these are the type of issues that you might come across and here are some um, possible things that might help you overcome them or some thoughts about how to overcome them and so we run we go through those and again, one of the things I want to focus on here is, okay, we, Haley and I have not agreed this beforehand, honestly, but do a ringing survey. So um, I'm just going to talk a little bit about what we're thinking of there. Oh, no, wrong one. Hmm. Okay, so <coughs> at the beginning of the year, Simon introduced us to a, um, a newsletter from the Farnham branch, which who had done a survey of their um, local towers. And it was a survey about what do you do now? Are you ringing for, when you've been able, have you been ringing for service? You know, have you rung for Christmas? You know, are you using um, ringing room or ding or, or, or whatever? There's a group of quest questions around that. And we've taken that survey and those questions and we've extended them. So it, in, instead of just like, what is your status now? It's also extending it to the future. So what are your concerns for the future? And, um, what, we, what we're planning to do is um, have one survey, which is a master survey, which is, which is hosted on um, Google Forms. Now, there's about three different survey platforms out there, but the advantage of Google Forms is that it's free, irrespective of the number of people you invite to take part in the survey. So that's the only reason that we've gone for that, whilst the others are re more restricted on numbers. Um, and if anyone is interested in doing a survey, we would replicate this master one that you can try and experiment with yourself. And that becomes your survey for your local area. And then you can customize it. 
and you can customize it by putting your own logo in or you can customize it by putting extra questions on and we will do all the IT and we will help you do that customization. And you will be the person who takes that survey, sends it out to people as a link, okay? And you can monitor who has replied, chase people up and you can look at the results. So this is definitely work in progress. The, the thing that we're looking at at the moment is GDPR. Um, it's not going to be a barrier, but we just have to get it right. So we need to be able to say to the people, the tower captains or secretaries who are filling in the form, what their data is going to be used for. And we need to be saying to the people who are sending this out and are therefore owners of the survey and the data, you know, you can do this, but be a little bit careful of doing this so that, you know, that no one is going to feel upset about the way that any of their data might, might very well be used. And the point of this is, as Haley says, it's about planning and planning based on data, planning on based on you know, things that you can measure. So, I mean, you might think that you might know what's happening in your branch and probably in normal times you do. But I know, for example, local tower where I ring, we are gonna probably lose two people. They haven't said it yet, but we have a person who's in their mid 80s. He's a thousand peeler. He loves ringing, but his ankles were getting a bit bad anyway. And he was restricting his ringing then. You know, whether he'll be able to get up the ladder after taking 18 months off, we really don't think he'll, he, he will. So that's one experienced person gone. We're also going to probably lose someone who's in her 60s and very weak wrists. What's kept her ringing is the fact that she's done it every week, you know, two or three times a week. You know, she probably won't be. Now, in normal times, those people would just be on, on our list of ringers going forward. But the branch would not know that actually this tower is just about to lose two ringers and maybe maybe a third as well. So that's why I'm saying that, you know, don't rely on your preconceptions. Go out and talk to people. And if you want to use this survey, then it is there and it is there for you. So the final piece is I'm going to talk to you is well, it's not a PowerPoint presentation, Leslie. It's about recruitment and retention. So this is a slightly different type of resource. This is much more information and giving and um, much more less of a discussion piece, really. So we are assuming that we're going to lose ringers. And therefore, the natural response to that will be that we will have to recruit people. So what we're looking at is to give people information so that they're not inventing the wheel and we're not forgetting something. So we've got a number of ways that that information um, uh, can be got out to people. There's a website. There's a website that's probably that's been there for three years and it's full of recruitment and retention resources going from all the way from you know, who should I be trying to recruit? You know, who works best for my tower? All the way to the outcome, which is not I got eight people signed up, but in two or five years time, I have five people who are regularly ringing on a Sunday service and, and, and progressing at their own speed along some sort of pathway which they find enjoyable. Um, so we have resources. On top of that, and this is really sad actually, we have recruitment and retention workshops, which are physical workshops. First quarter of 2020, um, the volunteer and leadership group piloted three of, of the central council, piloted three recruitment and retention workshops. They were very, very well received. Unfortunately, we don't know how successful they were because the last one happened less than a week before we went into lockdown. And therefore, all the 10 point plans that were put in place are on hold. <laughs> um, but there is an offer here of actually physical workshops. OK, so you get people together. And then our thinking is, well, 
if we can do physical workshops, yeah, you know, physical workshops can be um, qu quite tricky when we go back to ringing. And therefore, could we offer an online workshop, which has a number of advantages. So if you work in a branch and two towers are um, wanting to desperately need some uh, um, coaching and want to do a recruitment exercise, then that's not big enough. But it doesn't matter, does it? Because you can have your two towers in the, on in Truro or in Inverne Inverness, and you know, it, you know, there's no geography involved. It's completely COVID secure. So anyone who's feeling nervous, they do it from the comfort of their own home. And fi um, uh, finally, we can do it earlier. So if if you are going to, because good recruitment and retention is doesn't take one meeting it really is takes a certain amount, amount of time to plan it and get it right so we could actually start delivering these online workshops um, before we return to ringing to allow people to to do that and they can form a network as well come back and test each other's plans if that's required now and this is i think where we get back to you because do, to actually produce a really good online workshop with Zoom meetings where people come together, it's again, like a good recruitment and retention event, it takes time to develop quality products and, and actually work out how to deliver them. So what we need is your feedback. Is this, it's our idea, but is it a good idea? Okay. And if you saw, and that this is where we need a little bit of feedback from you guys, really, in terms of, yes, that is a good idea or it's not, and our people would use it if you did this. Because we've got loads of ideas, but they all take time to develop. So we need to focus. We need to focus on what people actually need and want to use. So that's a very brief tour of um, the toolbox. We really do hope that you enjoy the resources. There is a little bit of humor in them. Um, you find them stimulating and most importantly, you find them useful. And like I say, over the next few weeks, what would be really good is to get some feedback from you guys about where we go next with it. So thank you very much. Thank you, Leslie. That was great. Um, a lot in there um, mm -hmm. uh, and a range of different ideas and, and initiatives that we are available to use. So um, I think now, rather than going to ask if we've got specific questions for Leslie, I'm going to um, ask the steering committee if they will unmute steering group, get the language right. Uh, and if you have any questions now, if you'd like to raise your hand and then Matt will put you through and you can ask your question of the relevant person. I would like to call upon uh, Rob uh, first, Robert Whelan, who I think has got a question that he would probably like to put to uh, Simon. Rob, are you there? Sorry, just I'm ah, Hi, hi there. Hello, <laughs> Hello Robert. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Uh, I, have a, I have a confession to make. While, while Leslie was talking, I was updating our Guild newsletter, putting it all in. Um, <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> That's an asterisk by that um, name. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was, I, I, I was the one who hands up, who created more work for Leslie, saying I thought it would be useful to have a very short PowerPoint presentation um, for us to use. Um, when, when we have our sort of seminars and things, rather than reinventing the wheel, it's certainly mm. useful for us. Um, yeah, I, I saw two things really that I've shared with, with, with Simon and Annie up to now, sort of two areas really. Um, both of them sort of came up when we had our very preliminary meeting about um, we're going to have a, a series of two, well, at least two um, seminars about it coming at it really from two angles really the sort of two historical angles about bell ringing belt one being a church act, church related activity and one being a, a hobby uh, one was the, the, the fear amongst a lot of uh, it may be the same with our friends from Cornwall but in many of the rural parishes that, that the Church of England is no doubt going to be going through the same sort of exercises we're going through at the moment 
and Simon will have know, knows that, I imagine, in terms of what the impact of the pandemic is going to be on the future worship patterns of the Church of England, especially in rural areas. And quite a few of our, this is Salisbury Hill, by the way, quite, quite a few of our um, uh, rural parishes have heard already of rumours about um, um, changes in ministries and changes in, therefore, in worship patterns and in Sunday service ringing patterns. And, all, and, and, and possibly the, you know, the, the, um, the rug being pulled out from under ringers in, ter in terms of the, that being changed. And the other, the other side of the, the, the coin, on terms of the, the hobby side of it, is, and I'm sure this has happened all around uh, the country, but the, the growth out of virtually nowhere of virtual ringing, and how that's going to, how that's going to, it's not going to go away, mm. and it shouldn't go away, but how it, how it, how it is going to impact on um, ringing with people who can now ring Cambridge in the virtual sphere but can't play and hunt on a tower bell yet um you know we're going we're going to need to, it's going to be a sort of vaccine trial when we come back yeah. to see how how they how they um uh, um reintegrate and whether it's an incentive or disincentive they may decide god forbid they may decide well i can ring cambridge on the virtual bell so i go off and do it on that i can't ring it on the tower bells i'm going to get i'm not going to pursue tower bell ringing um, you know, is, is, is there's, there's so many different angles where that will have an impact. And also in Leslie's, in, in art, I'm sure in arts, work, in the arts world, you're already thinking about how these um, uh, ringing room, et cetera, will be used mm. in future in terms of teaching. Yes. If, if, if the vaccine trial shows that, it, that people who've, who, who've done it this way around can learn Cambridge and then go on to learn how to handle a bell. Will that be the way that we teach people in future? Will, will, there be, will they be taken through it on ding first or ringing room and then be taught how to handle a bell? Sorry, I'm, I'm rambling on. Those are the sorts of two areas, questions that I, I've, I've been pondering and have mm. I've been coming up to me from, from cause we've, we've, fortunately we've got a reasonably good um, virtual ringing scene um, but we're also a rural area. So th those are the two themes that so far have emerged for us anyway. Yeah, Sorry, it's not really a question. No, no, they're, they're, they're good. I'm glad you say it wasn't a question because I'm not sure I have the answer. But, <laughs> but, but, but they are, but they are very, they're useful. They're useful observations worth, worth thinking about. Because, I mean, the thing about, the thing about church closures, I mean, it's been said in the Church of England that, that the pandemic has probably accelerated the closure of churches between by between 10 and 15 years. Uh, it's, it, I mean, it's similar to the high street uh, and the effect it's having on the high street. So it is something to be very aware of. I mean, there is there is certainly a one of the dioceses in the Midlands, which is predicting closing 25 percent of its tower of its churches. So it's so it's that it's that. And, and obviously it's the, the smallest ones, the ones without the ones. If, if you've got a church with a which is not meeting its parish share with an average congregation of below 25, then the services won't won't be won't, won't continue or will or will, will be spread out more. So so we we definitely have to think about it. It does take of course it does in our favour is it takes a long time to close a church. Closing a church for for worship and and ceasing to have access to bells is is a ten year process. So so we do we do we do have time to think about it. But but we we probably do as a ringing community need need to need to start watching um, the the churches where which are at risk watching watching where the really good rings of bells are i mean it, it, the combination of really good rings of bells and band of ringers and church at risk we we have to we have to spot um whether would, would you put would you put a would you put in a new ring of bells and raise a new band at, at a tower which was ideal except that it doesn't have a very big congregation we're going to have i think we're probably going to make some quite some quite difficult choices um I mean, a, a, an interesting question. If 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 there are, and this is something we are working on, and the the, the Church of England, which we've talked to the recovery group about this, we've talked to Historic England about this, about about being able to being able being able to know when uh, it, it's far easier. I'll start this sentence a different way. It is far easier to get a ring of bells out of a church before it before it's closed. Um, and and all all parties know that. 
and and we've been talking to them about if if a church is going to be closed can we make sure that we that we can get bells out before before it gets a problem and and and, and generally that that shouldn't be a problem but then we need to think i think as a ringing community if if there are bells coming out of churches which are going to be closed where are we going to put them do, do we look to put them in churches which do have strong congregations do we do we use do we put them into secular ringing centres or do we and and I wash my mouth out of soap for saying this do you do you do you do you take that metal and reinvest it in the places where it can do the most good there is there is there is around 10 I reckon there's probably 10 million pounds worth of bell metal in the country at the moment that's not being wrong I mean I think that there are some really 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 difficult choices um, to be made, but 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 being aware of of, of churches that are at risk of closure is a, is an important point. I'm, I'm sorry that was a bit maybe doom and gloom, but but it it, it is. But the, Robert's point is good. It's it's definitely something we should be thinking about. And if I could just come back on the on the growth point uh, again, I think Robert, you're quite right that of all the of all the ringing online tools uh, uh, discoveries, ringing ringing room um, is is one that will stay. Um, and, and how it's going to be used. I think it's and particularly uh, useful and will stay in, in handbell ringing. Uh, I know I know at least one prominent ringer who is very anti ringing room, because he because he thinks that it is is um, encouraging people not to care about it. It doesn't teach rhythm in the same way that that tower bell ringing does, and that it might create a generation of people who yes have 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 accelerated too far, and hence will try and ring their course of Cambridge when they can't handle. Um, and and I, I see ringing room. Okay, it is it is it is useful. It's becoming more useful, I think, in teaching. People are people are genuinely making progress in ringing. Um, but but its its main benefit, I think, is keeping bands together, um, and and the, and the way it's used for that. I think we'd be struggling much more if we didn't have it. Um, but it, it's it's an interesting point how it can be used for learning. There are there are I think I think there are people using Ringy Room now who are who will who are find that it's easier to learn the concepts, for instance, of plain hunting and, and, and following bells, etc., in a in a virtual environment without having to do it at the same time as still having to remember how to do the ring in the bell bit. Because we all know that when you're every time we're pushed forward in, in learning, you're still you're still trying to remember the last bit. It's still hoping that the Sally is going to come down in front of your face and that you're going to actually remember to do that bit. And if you've actually learned some theory and practiced it and seen it and heard it, I mean, I've got a, uh, one of our young ringers who, who, who learns very much by sound. Um, and she now has, has learned lots of things by sound, which will help her. And she wouldn't have had the opportunity to do that without, without ringing room. So I think it's a, I think it's a, it's a very good observation that we've got to be careful with it, particularly with the people who have accelerated a bit far and maybe need to be brought back down to earth a little bit. But hopefully, hopefully the joy of actually the physical, the joy of the physical experience and that will will be so overwhelming that we'll get over the fact that at the moment you can ring Cambridge and in a few months' time you'll be able to ring Bob Liner. Can, can I that, say that didn't can really I, answer the question, but those are observations. Can, can I say something about that as well, please, from a toolbox perspective? So um, on the toolbox, we do actually have a piece around what we call lockdown learners. And lockdown learners are exactly these people who perhaps were only ringing, well, only were ringing call changes and uh, maybe plain hunt beforehand. And now, as you say, they have progressed an awful long way and have really enjoyed doing it as well. So we we recognise that that's going to be a problem. And um, so we've tried to think about the best way of reintegrating people into the tower when perhaps they're going to feel disappointed that what they can ring so well on ringing room and ding etc they're not going to be able to reproduce because of their lack of um, fine quality um, bell control and so we try to put some ideas together some top tips we're also thinking about putting together um, a couple of um, um, webinar presentations one perhaps targeted at teachers and one targeted as well about to the learners themselves and just sort of say this is what it might be like and these are strategies that you can use as a ringer or you can use as a teacher in order to keep people going 
looking at performance um, on the end of a bell and actually keep people motivated and part of the band. So we are thinking about that and we have some ideas about um, not just what the theory is, but how to then try and talk to people about that. Um, I think the second thing about um, ringing room and I would say handbells as well, because it's not just online ringing that has really taken, taken off. I think handbell groups have um, really taken off as well. And so we are looking for um, artists from a, a teaching perspective um, on our module two courses, which is about learning, practicing foundation skills and learning methods about how you could actually some parts are better taught on ringing room. You know, the concept of place, which really does phase quite a lot of ringers when when they first get there. It, but if people who are taught, taught on ringing room just get it straight away. So there are certain things that, you know, tools in our armory. Let's not forget. OK, let's keep on using them. And the same for handbells as well. I've got someone looking at the moment about how to use blended learning in terms of using handbells as a teaching aid, just as ringing room and ding are being used as um, could be used as uh, teaching aids as well. So these things will be ro rolling out and are being thought of at the moment. Thank you, Leslie. That's great. Uh, Mike Chester, you've got your hand up. I wonder if you'd like to ask a question. Yeah, I'm going to the recruitment side of things. Uh, we don't know how the lockdown is going to finish, whether it's going to be some sort of gradual one or in terms of ringing, are we going to have a sudden pulling the cork out the bottle and or whatever. I just wonder if you've considered when is the right time to recruit. I've just got this feeling, and I've got absolutely no evidence, so I could be totally wrong again, <laughs> that a lot of people won't want to do a new hobby of any type whatsoever if the lockdown is uh, eased quickly. What they want to do is to get that Irish fellow uh, more money in his airline and go and have a holiday or do something. I, I've got no evidence for this. I could be wrong, but I think we need to make sure that we get the timing of any recruitment drive, particularly if it's a large one, right? Because we could end up being too early or too late uh, if we're not careful. Thanks, Thanks Leslie. So I was just going to reply, reply on that one. Yes, we don't know anything about the timing, but there are a couple of very positive points. The first is that during the whole of lockdown from March the 16th last year, art has been receiving learn to ring inquiries. In fact, they have been going up over time and you know it makes us roll our eyes a little bit because it's like how is that going to work when we're in lockdown but irrespective of that people are feeling isolated they want to connect more with their social social um their local community than perhaps they did in the past they want um uh, something that um, is good for their mental health and is also good for their overall well-being. And I think that, um, so we shouldn't feel too negative. You know, people do want to, um, they do want to learn bells. And I think those four things that I pointed out there are perhaps handles that we can use in our marketing that perhaps we wouldn't have used before the pandemic. So we... <laughs> So I do feel that getting the timing right is correct. But I think people will want to start a new hobby. Thank you, Leslie. That's can great. I, can, I just, can I come back on that one as well? And this is a question that I was going to ask for ask everybody. I think the we're some way, of course, from face to face teaching. Um, and what what might help us get critical mass of bands back and get ringers back is is a is a focus to a certain on lapsed ringers um especially especially at first i mean if you if you think if i don't know what the number is no one, none of us know how many ringers there are but i bet there are five times as many lapsed ringers there are ringers who ring regularly and if we could get a fifth of them back then we'd we'd make, but obviously some of them something caused every single every single lapsed ring is something caused them to, to lapse and what what do we have to change um to get them to come back we might just have to what could it be? It's probably different for very many people. But I think I think lapsed ringers and, and ideas for getting lapsed ringers back would be would be valuable. There are there are I'm particularly interested in whether you could persuade lapsed ringers to come back into ringing room at first. We know we know there have there have been some. I discovered one last week um, who's who's been persuaded. Somebody who's a bit bored 
um, remember how to ring and 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 as and as rung a court appeal on ringing room. Now uh, that could that could be that could be enough to spark that. Oh yeah, I actually quite like that. Um, it's interesting to know, but it, it could it could it could be a very good start um, before we can before we can teach people from scratch. Thank you, Simon. That's great. Now, I'm very conscious we're almost out of time and the second half will be starting in about 10, 10 to 15 minutes. Are there any last questions that people are reaching to ask? Because the, I can't see any hands up. Can you, Matt? Uh, Jeffrey oh. Horrett had his hand up and down. Uh, I okay. don't know if you've got a question or is swapping uh, up. Hi. Yeah. Um, it's not really a, a question as such. It's... Um, the ringing room to tower question, um, I think, is uh, quite a lot to do with managing expectations. Yes. So even going from experienced ringers, trying to get them into ringing room, you have to manage their expectations because they think, oh, I can ring Cambridge in the tower. And when they get in the ringing room, they can't even plain hunt. And if you're not very careful, they don't come back again. And I feel the same could be true when when we go back in the tower, we have to manage our learners' expectations mm. as carefully as we can. So that's the first point I'd mention. And the second is this use of handbells. I have already, um, I've got the set, I've bought a set of e-bells, but I've also bought the set of e-bells for the tower and my, uh, for the ring uh, training center, my view is I'm going to use the e-bells and the ringing simulator to teach uh, plane hunt, etc., um, uh, uh, as a as a way of as a teaching exercise or a teaching implement. So, um, just a couple of points, really. No, thank you. That's very good. Thank you very much for that. Uh, Jane, I think you had your hand raised. Um, yes, it was just one thing to follow on uh, talking about uh, returning, which I thought was very interesting, getting people back into ringing. One of the things, if we can all remember back just before lockdown, was that we recruited a lot of new ringers, new people to ringers. We certainly did endorse it. Um, and that was under the Ringing Remembers campaign. And I know a lot of those were ringing virtually, that's fine, but quite a few of them are quite nervous about that going back into the tower mm -hmm. and I think we have to be very careful from what the previous person said about we need to treat things very gently and we need to think about that and also can I say on a note of safety we also need to think about return to ringing uh, about the belfries themselves some of which were it's a bit like my car that stood um, in the driveway for weeks and hadn't been touched and we do need to make sure that the bells have been maintained properly before we go back in heaven forbid there were lots of terrible accidents happening people haven't gone back in before we return to ringing to check the bells are all okay and then there's some rope bells and ropes could you know there could be issues so I think there's yeah. two things there that we yeah. probably need to just think about but can I also say thank you to everybody involved with the toolkit it's absolutely fantastic well, thank you very much, Jane. And there are two articles actually in the toolbox. One is about confidence with returning ringers. And then there's another one on maintenance. So hopefully um, you'll find those of use because they're very valid points. Yeah. So I think, and there's no other hands up. So um, I just wanted to talk to you about um, the next step and to see whether you think it would be useful for us to have another session like this in a few weeks time when you've had chance to um, have a look at the, the toolbox, maybe like Haley's done, try some initiatives, see if they work, and then maybe begin to, to feed back some of the information that we could share and learn from your experiences um, uh, uh, and just see what works and what maybe needs refining. I, I know as a steering group, they're going to be carrying on looking at different things. And we picked up some ideas today that I think are important very important to put in. Um, so just, do you think it's a good idea to meet again in a few weeks? Is this forum okay? Yes, thank you. Uh, as I said right at the beginning, Saturday seems to be very busy. So is Sunday a good day, do you think? Rather than during the week? I, I do, oh, Jeff's got a, yeah, oh, good. I, I have to say, I did have a, uh, a comment from, from, you know, thank goodness there are some people who are working, you know, to keep those of us retired in the manner we've become accustomed, but you know, they're on Zoom all day. 
So the last thing they really want to do is be on Zoom in the evening as well. So I don't know whether Sunday might be a, a, a preferred date for us, if that's okay. So um, I can't see any comments. Yeah, just thumbs up. Okay, well, we'll get back to you. We'll carry on sending the, the um, correspondence through to you. If you've got any issues, please send them through and we can share them. And um, I don't know whether you want to say anything in, in closing, Simon, but I'd just like to thank all of you so much for being here today. I will let you know where you can view um, the recording afterwards if you want to go through Haley's tour, uh, talk again and, uh, and Leslie's explanation. But um, Simon, do you want to plus, yeah, just close yes, the all meeting? I, all, all I would say is that, and I said at the start, it was a, it was a, t it was a team effort pulling all this together. But I should note that I think Leslie wrote an awful lot